guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead Pateri with you today. We're up early. We've gotten a ton of homesteading chores done late into dark last night, early this morning, and it's gonna be really hot today. And summer is really, really amping up in terms of a lot of activities. So we thought we would take the afternoon, the early morning and afternoon, and uh, go ahead and make a trip over to Murphy. Uh, as you know, we are doing Murphy, North Carolina, which is not that far. I know when we talk about going to all of these different places and things, it sounds so far away. Folks, it's like an hour and a half, okay? So it's not that far from my house. So we can get a lot done, pack up lunches and whatnot, head over there for a couple of hours, swim, you know, visit the Nantahala Gorge and, and swim in the river and do some genealogy and eat real quick and come back and we're still good to go. So. That's what we're doing today because it's going to be hot. So I have a lot of questions. And really, this is a would be a very long video, and I'm going to try my best to not go that route, um, about genealogy uh, and why. I am getting just an incredible amount of messages, emails, and whatnots asking how I'm having so much luck um, in terms of my genealogy. So I'm gonna to try to be vague to give you some hints and then I'll try to, you know, my case is specific. Every situation is gonna be very different. Um, I'm having success in certain areas where other places in my genealogy, it is slow. Uh, the reason I started this is because I naturally um, am attracted to history and ancestry and family roots. This is, I've been into this in a sense for as long as I can remember. And I think we're living in a day and age now where we have access to a lot of information that's easy for us to get our hands on, you know, from home. Now, there are ins and outs to that. So, a couple of years ago, I got, in, I got to a point where I wanted to make that part of my quest as far as my own personal journey and mission um, to also help me learn about myself, where I come from. It's about where you come from. The, the whole point is to not find out, am I this or am I that or were they this or were they that? It's who are we? And everything is interesting, okay? So, long story short, I got into Ancestry. I went straight to Ancestry.com. I know that's what you're looking for. Um, and that tied in with homeschooling as well because it involves my children and, and, and telling them things and teaching them things. I'm trying to build a family connection and history and journal for my entire family. That is my goal. I will tell you it is very time consuming. Okay, this is not something that you jump on one night and you find out all the answers. It takes years. I'm several years in. One particular lead that uh, has turned out to be very successful for me has taken a year to accomplish. And part of that is just by, by divine intervention. Okay, so you, you really, if you talk to folks that have been doing genealogy for a long time, um, and you know, again, I'm new at this. I'm not a historian and I'm not a genealogist, but I am a girl getting into it, uh, staying into it, and really putting my best foot forward and effort in trying to go the extra mile, meaning you can't just get on Ancestry or some website and find all the answers you need. You can't go and do a DNA test and it's going to tell you exactly what you thought or what you need to know. Every time you get something, uh, whether it's a marriage certificate, whether it's a census, and what am I talking about? I'm talking about documentation. Families, we all have family stories uh, that we, you know, Mamaw was this, or Papaw was that, or Papaw came from here, or whatever, whatever, whatever. And a lot of, uh, in a lot of cases, those are just family stories. And they're leads. You need to look at everything as a clue or as a lead not as an absolute. It's like, it's like a star in the sky. One star by itself is just that. You put a multitude of them together, it can paint a picture. They're all clues. You're trying to, you know, it's like a constellation. So I started, you know, really with asking a lot of questions. First things first, let's get to the, nut, the nuts and bolts, okay? First things first, if you have older generations in your family, you need to sit them down and you need to just absolutely take an apple pie. You know, we're having a spaghetti dinner one night and pinto beans and cornbread and, or an, and apple pie or whatever and we're gonna talk. Ask questions. Do it several times because I've noticed that when I ask certain questions to the elders in my family, I get great information. I wanna make sure that it's consistent and sometimes the, the third or 
fourth time you ask a question, they might put in a little sprinkle of something extra that they forgot before. So you don't want to do it just once. You want to do it a couple of times, okay? Um, because they'll think they told you something and they didn't. And that one moment can change everything. And what that one moment can be is a specific name, a specific place, and a specific date. You need to tie in with that, okay? A lot of folks are asking me about my success with my Cherokee genealogy. Um, and the main thing, the reason I think I'm having some success is because folks, you have to use common sense. Okay, no matter what you're searching for uh, and what you find, you have to use common sense. When you get online, a lot of people tend to blow through certain things and they, all of a sudden they are, you know, all of a sudden they're the granddaughter of Napoleon or something. And they found that out in two hours. Uh, probably not going to be the case. You can't jump on Ancestry and just start linking to stuff. You need to start with you. You need to go back with your mom and dad or whichever side you're going with your mom dad you got to go to your grandparents you got to start you got to work backwards you can't just go i'm gonna go 1838 and boom here i go no you got to work back to the present and through the generations that you most likely knew and are con closely connected to and work your way back you do want to pick one side okay it, and that gets real this is where your mind will blow up because you get on there and if you find a lot of neat stuff you tend to get really excited and you start going all over the place it can get very confusing now you can start with a grandparent I think it's easier to start if you're starting cold turkey from scratch don't have a specific goal you're just trying to see what you can do here Go with perhaps a paternal side. Pick a parent and grandparent that you knew, that you're familiar with, and start working your way back and, and find that surname and you're going back through there. And, and, and really, truly take your time at each spot. You're going to want to look at all, this, uh, at all the census. Marriage, death, birth, um, things such as draft cards. All, you'll find all kinds of stuff. All of those things are clues, and it's time-consuming. That tells you where a person was, most likely at a certain point in time, okay? It is unlikely that I would have a Cherokee princess grandmother. Number one, there wasn't any Cherokee princesses. <laughs> uh, but number two, um, you know, it's unlikely that I would have one that was born in 1801 in uh, North Dakota. catch my drift so they weren't there um, so if I'm finding something I can't assume or or if I see something you have to go huh I mean you've really got to question and pinpoint you've got to use common sense in this whole process you need to know what was going on in that time this is the thing the reason I have success is because of the approach of a like a detective why were these people here at this certain point in time? What were they doing? What was their goal? Why did I have grandparents and a grandmother born in Cherokee Indian Territory? Why? And then you go from there and it starts to lead. Do I need, what roles do I need to dig on? What, what am I looking for? And that's going to be with anybody, okay? So you've really got to take your time in understanding that understanding historically what happened in that time period, particularly in that certain place, is critical, okay? My genealogy right now is focusing more on my mother's side because I have more of a link to older generations from that side. Uh, you know, we all grew up here in East Tennessee, Southeast Tennessee, this whole area. Um, and our connections lead to and go back to southwestern North Carolina, particularly southwestern North Carolina, which is Cherokee County, northern Georgia. Uh, my entire uh, family, back really honestly going back to almost 1750, is all linked from my mother's side in this region. Um, so, you know, I look at counties, I look at territories, I look at when something became a county. Um, you look at all of these different things um, to make sense of what you're doing. So you need to talk to your parents, your grandparents, your aunts, your uncles, your cousins. Look in Bibles. Here's another thing. You can't just do stuff on ancestry. You need to try, if at all possible, to get in the car 
and go there. Now, if you find ancestors that are from Antrim or from Germany or from South Africa or whatever, it's probably, depending on where you are, probably unlikely that you're going to hop in the car and go there today or tomorrow. I get that. Okay, I'm not going to Northern Ireland anytime soon. I wish I could, but it's probably not going to happen. So, but the reality is with a lot of, of my family history and ties being Western North Carolina, Tennessee, East Tennessee, North Georgia, a little bit of South Carolina, um, all of these, and even some in Virginia, these are likelihoods of places that I can go. I can make a day trip, a family trip go to the courthouses. This is where we get into this. You need to understand that deeds are important um, and a lot of these records that you find in the courthouse are not online. Um, some of the things I found online were a lead but I was able to confirm or, or not confirm certain things because I went to the courthouse or to the health department um, and I was able to dig in real deep with understanding okay this is this, or, you know, should I, you, you know, you're constantly back checking everything. Uh, is this, is this accurate? Is this true? Does this match? Um, you also want to go to grave sites. You can go to gravesite.com. Going to the cemeteries uh, and is not only an emotional experience um, for you and your family, and you can, but you can find out a lot there. Like, for example, when I go to the grave site over here for my, uh, uh, grand, great grandparents, um, I did not know they were buried in a cemetery that was predominantly Cherokee. I went to the church. I went to, through the church booklet. I'm talking to people in the church, the church records, the, the, the two cemeteries. And, and that has, that just threw me into a, a whole new world that frankly I wasn't looking for. Uh, with this particular grandfather, that's uh, great grandfather that's going back, I honestly thought we were looking at missionary work in Indian Territory, uh, which is still a, a possibility um, if you look at his history and lifestyle. But that's that's not what I was suspecting or looking for. So depending upon where you are and what and how much time you have, I warn you that because this is very fun. It's very addictive. It's very challenging, but you should take it serious at each documented point. I do encourage you also to get several notebooks. I don't mean the 90, the, the, the 25 cent or 89 cent. You will need things to write in, but you always want to have, I have gone and gotten large notebooks with the, the, the prongs that you tear apart and you can put things in um, for each surname that I'm working on. Um, and uh, because you are going to want to start taking pictures, you're going to want to start printing things off. Anytime you can print something off and put it in one of those clear, um, like folder divider things and keep that information, because you will get to a point where you start forgetting or names get crossed up. Because if you go back so far, everybody's named after their uncle, their, you know, their dad, their grandfather, their, and you're going to have 14 Samuels. Well, which Samuel are you? And what year again? And oh, he was. Oh no, wait a minute. He was Union, not Confederate. Okay, wait, 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 wait. And you're gonna, you're gonna want to keep all of that organized. So, be in it to win it. <clears throat> it is a total commitment. Um, it takes months. It can take. You can get to something and have these incredible leads and find out all this information, and then it just stops. And you have to just go. Okay, I'm stopping right now. Maybe I should now go to the courthouse or maybe now I talk to my grand. You, there's all different ways that you verify things. It never stops. Or maybe it's time to take a break from that one and jump over to this one. Um, not that you're just trying to jump, but if, if you're at a standstill, take a break from that one because you're, you know, you get so excited you keep digging. So I hope this video helps you out. I have a lot of questions and like I said, I'm not a historian and I'm not a genealogist. Um, I did take the DNA test and um, <laughs> all of what is so amazing <clears throat> is my entire um, documented genealogy when it shows you uh, your grouping um, is literally in one nut little cluster in southeastern Tennessee, western North Carolina, North Georgia, and a little bit of South Carolina, uh, which was huge. Um, but that's just, you know, and it tells you how you break down and all of that. That is just another clue 
um, that is just another hint for you to go dig and for you to search out names and to look for documentation. And you can't just get online. And I, I do want to warn some, give you a little warning for your own, um, you know, peace of mind. There's a lot on the internet, and you know, there's a lot of stories on the internet. You really need to take, use a lot of discretion and use a lot of common sense. I'm going to say that one more time. When you see something, you need to say, is that true? Could that be factual? Could that be my uh, long lost cousin? Um, you know, people tend to throw things on the internet or people t tend to take things from the internet and a lot of things are misrepresented. And that is, um, that's a shame because this is something that should be very sacred to each individual um, and uh, into each family and it should be taken very seriously. So I hope this helps you out. We're gonna see what we find today. More goodies. We're actually headed to the library if I didn't mention that. We are, we've hit the courthouse several times. Uh, we've hit the deeds office. We've been to several, we've been to the church, the graveyards. We've talked to people. We have all this documentation and I found a book online, uh, a book that was written back in the 70s um, that um, I'm interested in looking into, um, and in this particular case, it's about the Trail of Tears, the Cherokee removal, um, the people that were there before and after. And uh, supposedly, I have a link in that book, uh, our family name. So uh, we're going to be doing some history uh, searching and see what we find at the library, uh, and also local museums. So museums, courthouses, churches, libraries, you got to hit them if you can, or at least give them a call and see if you can find out anything that you can. We'll talk to you soon. Our journey continues into the mountains. Okay guys, I'm in the genealogy room here in Murphy. And, <laughs> yes, God's Irish. And um, it's overwhelming. So I am at the uh, this is the Cherokee Culture and Genealogical Room, and um, down by the courthouse in Murphy. Uh, they also call this the Nantahala Library, and I'm just going to pan around real quick. I only have an hour. Uh, this is going to be multiple trips. Um, so today we're just kind of looking around at everything, so I'll try to show you some of it because we've got to get to work. Look over here. Beautiful.